good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, they say that no man is an island entire of itself. Men are, however, much more likely than women to lead solitary lives without people that they consider to be their friends. So how hard is it to really make friends? Do women have it easier than men to make friends? I don't know. These are some questions that we're going to answer and at least ponder throughout today's show. In a recent poll finished in 2019, almost one in five men admit to having no close friends whatsoever. In the YouGov poll found that 18% of men do not have a close friend and 32% of men had no one that they counted on as a best friend. On the other hand, in that same poll, women, 12% of those women do not have close friends and 24% of the women polled did not have a best friend. So we can see that obviously women are doing a better job, easier job of making friends or keeping friends, whereas men haven't done the same. And it's interesting, I was reading some other articles that they have dubbed the friendship crisis when it comes to men making friends with other men. So we have a friendship crisis on our hands. And as I read through different articles and I read different journals and I talk to various people, you know, I found that in particular... Men who are straight, okay, so they, there's a sexual orientation, a non-gay, non-bisexual, not pansexual sexuality, okay, those particular men claim that they actually have difficulty making friends with other men, okay? And so the interesting thing about it is there is no Tinder for finding people to watch baseball games with. I mean, you know, I might actually invent that at some point in time, but there is no Tinder. There is no meetup like that. I mean, definitely there's Facebook. There's a lot of meetings that people can go to. There's various different things that you can find. There's various different activities and extracurricular activities that you can go to. There's all kinds of things, but you got to be willing to put yourself out there and to basically put yourself, for many of us, in an unknown or even uncomfortable position. But for, before we get into the ideas of ways that we can actually make new friends, because I, I, there is solution, okay? There's always going to be a solution on the show because this show is based on solutions. It's based on finding that ability to make the changes in our life that we need to make, finding that, and actually cultivating a new way of doing things so that we can create more happiness and more joy in our life. However, we have to look at the facts. We have to look at the information, and that's why this show is so important. So we're not just going to gloss over it. We're going to actually talk about the truth because it is true. Men have more difficult time making friends with other men for the idea of just hanging out with men and having camaraderie, right? And that becomes a functional difficulty. And I know that some of you out there say, well, I do have some friends. I've had so-and-so as a friend of mine for, you know, 20 years. Well, it is, it is a lot easier to make friends while you're still in school. And if you've cultivated those relationships back in school and still have those relationships, maybe you're not hanging out as much while picking up the phone and reconnecting is a good thing. But it's a lot easier when you're in a school situation, when you're in a younger situation, to make friends. It's a little harder in the work situation that we're in. Many of us are sequestered in a job. We work from an office. We're working long hours. We don't leave till late. Some of us are in careers, well, it doesn't make it easy to make male friends to go watch a game or to go do something with because it's not the environment that you're meeting these folks. And so on today's show, I've asked a good friend of mine, Scott, to come on the show because he has actually experienced difficulty in making male friends. And I think it's interesting for us to talk about because I think many of you out there, obviously the poll tells us, you know, I mean, come on, that's pretty obvious that it's true. So, you know, Scott, you know, I want to ask you the first question really is that first off, I know that there's a difficulty in making friends for men. They've called it the friendship crisis. I mean, so there's definitely difficulty. I mean, they're calling it a crisis for God's sakes, but why do you feel it's so difficult? I mean, when you're younger, you know, you have college, you're going to always make your friends that way. And then even when you get out of college, you're going to have work, um, you're going to have, you know, if you play in a league like a softball league or a volleyball league, you're going to have your friends through there. Um, but then the older you get, the less type of leagues you have. I think only one I'm left in is fantasy football. And I just don't meet a whole lot of 
new people I want to be friends with. You know, I, I don't try to approach people, you know, like at a gas station. Um, it used to be a lot different when I used to hang out at bars, but I don't do the bar scene a whole lot anymore unless I'm watching like a Maverick game. That will be a little different if I go to like a local bar to watch a Mav game. De- definitely have my friends that I associate with and talk with. Um, and, you know, kind of like what you're saying, um, the older we get, it makes it more difficult, especially because most of them are married. Um, and that makes it a 10 times more hard. Um, because when my friends are married, their wives don't want them hanging out with someone single. You know, we can not really go on trips together and, you know, they can't really do stuff, you know, out of a family setting, you know, but once or twice a month. Um, but besides that, you know, it just makes it harder the older you get. Well, I, I see the I see your point for sure. And one of the things that I've realized, too, is, you know, I think I shared this with you. You and I were talking a few days back. And there was a time when, I mean, some of my, some of my best friends are, are still men, and I still have some great best friends that are men. But what I found is that um, sometimes, even as a female, when that friend would get married, um, our relationship became a little different. Um, and definitely, I knew the wife, the, the soon-to-be wife, and then the, the, the woman that they would marry. But at, at first, I was awesome. I was considered, you know... You know, part of the group, I was considered, you know, part of the package, you know, the best friend comes with. But as the months go by, it starts changing. And I'm sure that you've seen that in the very beginning when a buddy of yours is getting married and everything's great and there's all this fun and excitement. And then it seems like a few months after the wedding, you don't really hear from them that much anymore. I mean, it's, you know, it's very true, uh, you know, and and, you know, they're starting their lives and they have, you know, building families, which is totally understandable. But I guess in the other places you have to go to, are you have to try to make new acquaintances. And I don't have problems talking to people. Um, and I still keep in touch with my friends from 20 years ago. It's not really the talking part. It's more the socializing part, you know, where you want to, besides getting together for poker or, you know, going to watch a game at a local pub. It's kind of difficult to get your schedule together to do things. And and I understand that. And I think one of the things you hit on earlier, which I thought was uh, profound, is that, yes, many of us used to do a lot. We used to hang out at the bars, used to hang out at the clubs, um, a lot more social activity after every single night going out partying. But when you start scaling that back a little bit, it starts changing as well because – I know that you have a full-time job, and I know that you work, you know, six days a week. And so coupled with that work schedule and the fact that you've kind of pulled back from going out to all the bars except for when there's a certain sporting event or something like that, it does really put a limit on, for that matter, who you're actually going to even meet or come into contact with. You know, you're absolutely right, and I'll be honest, too. To my work, I work in a field where – I'm in the cosmetic industry, so it's very tough to meet friends through there that are not females. Um, and you're all right. It, it is, gets much tougher the older you get um, to meet people and even try to, you know, almost do like a, you know, like, how are you? You know, just to try to walk up to someone you don't know makes it even 10 times harder. It does. And and I think that's – and I think the thing, too, about men – and it was interesting. I was reading an article, and this uh, Dr. Alexandra Pittman is a co-lead of the Loneliness and Social Isolation and Mental Health Research Network at the University College in London. And it was interesting because uh, this particular doctor was talking about loneliness and how it can manifest in different ways, physical health effects of loneliness, including increased risk of strokes and chronic physical pain and all those kind of things, but also – you know, just the impact of that has the same uh, likelihood as like obesity, smoking, or even physical inactivity. And I found that, and because you're not alone, you know, I've spoken with many of my clients and, and many of my friends, including you. It's like, I feel that men feel like they have to walk the planet alone almost. And occasionally someone will come in and out and, and they'll hang out. But I feel like most men almost take that on. And and I didn't catch it until I guess you and I started talking about this about a month ago. I was talking to my husband. I've been married what almost it'll be seventeen years in June. And I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, where are all your you know, your buddies at? And I remember when we first met, he had a lot of guy friends and they were all buddies and they all worked together. 
and it was all the, it was all the job, and they would all hang out. You know, on Saturday night, we'd go over to someone's house, and they would smoke the cigars, and they would put the brisket on the grill, and everybody would hang out. Well, when he ended up moving jobs, those friendships also changed, and it was interesting to see how they didn't stay together. Um, and then, you know, it, that was always interesting, too, because I think men make more of their friendships based around their work than women do. And maybe that's not the case, but it's really interesting how it, I saw that he didn't carry those friendships over or the other folks. I, I'm not saying that it was his fault or one, anybody's fault. I'm just saying, but the friendship didn't carry over. And I thought that was very interesting. And I would agree, too. Um, in my past jobs, I would have great friends through work. We would hang out, you know, almost all the time when we're not working. But you're that's very true. You know, when you it's almost like when you switch careers and move on to a different industry, even it's I don't know if the word is tough to keep up with them. But for some reason, you just don't. And it, it it's and it also it, it has a, a quite an issue too. uh when I'm in relationships, I notice that I do a lot more in relationship settings where you'll meet other people's significant others. You guys will go out in group settings. So it's a lot easier too in that situation. But now I'm currently single, not in a relationship. So you don't have that aspect either to kind of help bridge the bridge over. Um, stick with me. Stick with me, Scott, because when we return, we'll be talking more about this. I think this is a, a huge topic for a lot of people. It's affecting a lot of men out there. It's affecting you. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to talk more about what the difficulty is in making these friends. And then later on at the bottom of the hour, we're going to talk about ways to actually make new friends, things you can do, and ways to overcome the situation. So stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. I'll be back this time. You know it. In two shades. it up and jump in the deep end on perspectives now here's ashley welcome back live to live your true life perspectives and i'm your host ashley burgess on today's show we're talking about the difficult time and the challenge that men have making men friends they actually call it the friendship crisis it seems that more men are having more difficulties trying to make friends and it's very real uh, we looked at studies, we've looked at different polls, we looked at all the stats, and the stats are showing us that, yes, indeed, it's a lot easier for women to make friends. Now, now we're just trying to get down to the bottom of why that is. And in the last segment, Scott and I have been talking about the difficulty of making friends, why it makes it difficult. We've also been talking about when you are the single guy, okay, the single guy, and your buddies are getting married, their wives don't really want them hanging out with you. You know, because you're the single guy that you can get into the party and, and, and you know, maybe uh, maybe your friend was was telling, you know, their wife about some of the crazy things y'all did. And the next thing you know, well, you've been banned or you've been pushed off to once a month. Maybe if she's in a really good mood or did something and she's going to let him go out and have some fun. So that becomes a problem. And what happens, too, is that. Over that period of time, the relationship that you had starts to dwindle. There's a lot of water under the bridge, and that can be problematic. You know, Scott, you know, one of the things I was thinking about and you and I were talking about on break is that, you know, when you're single and you're in an apartment-type situation and you're living in a really cool area and there's all these bars and clubs and everything around, that's one thing. But what happens when the single guy moves into his own house? How does that change as well? I mean, it's a it's a big factor, you know, when you're living in those huge mega complexes that we have so many nice ones in the Metroplex. You have these beautiful pools. You have these awesome settings. They do all these different type of leagues. I mean, now that I'm a homeowner, the only league I'm in is fantasy. Uh, and we don't even have a draft anymore. We do it over the computer. We used to have, you know, a big draft party where we'd all meet up at someone's house or do it at a bar. I mean, you know, it's... You know, it's kind of, it, it gets a difficulty, you know, and I don't want to have to go buy a boat to have friends all the time, but, you know, that's what a lot of people do. A boat. And so, yeah, that puts you back into kind of a party scene. Everybody's hanging out, you know, obviously down at the lake, there's definitely a lot of stuff going on. 
But yeah, I, I think that the combination of the lifestyle change, you know, moving out of the apartment complex where it's fun and exciting, there's people, of you know, of, of our ages there, a lot of single folks to a lot of activities, to moving to a house, having that career that takes up a lot of time, you in particular having a career where you're actually around more women than men, and, you know, that makes it even more of a struggle. And then I think also as well is that you you were talking about on the break too as well is like now living in your house it's harder to make friends but yet it's like how how do you make friends when you're in a neighborhood like that like you just don't walk up to some guy walking their dog right and be like hey you want to go hang out <laughs> you know i've been in a house since 2013 that makes it tough because all my neighbors they're married couples and you know i'm like the one guy on the street that's single and lives by myself uh, and you know, it doesn't help. I have a hot tub on my roof. Uh, and I'll be honest, it, it, I do enjoy having a lot more girlfriends because it's, you know, sometimes it's a lot easier for me to make friends with girls. Um, and especially in my work environment, it's a lot easier for me as well to socialize with girls, but being in a house setting in a neighborhood makes it very difficult. Um, especially, you know, because they just, it's, you're you're the awkward one. You're the you're the odd person out. And I even live in a cool area, you know, um, that's really it's a you know hot area, lots of stuff to do. But once again, you know, I'm not big on going to sit at a restaurant by myself and having dinner. Makes sense. And and see that's something that I think a lot of us don't think about too, is that we, we don't really realize our situation and it almost can be very isolating. Um, you know, let me ask you, you know, when you look back at the school age and, and the school times and the relationships, do you feel like there's some relationships that maybe because I, cause I think there's a OK, let me first off, let me divide up kind of I feel like the men, the men population real quick. I think that there's a large part of men population that they have a lot of guy friends. Their guy friends have always been important to them. They will like ride or die for these guys. They've been friends since they were in elementary school, middle school, and they'll always be friends even though their lives might be completely different. And they really, really cultivated those relationships for whatever reason. Then I've also met a lot of men who, um, you know, they have relationships with friends, you know, from old school, but rarely see them, really, rarely kind of make a move to actually spend time with them. And then I've seen another sector of men where, the majority of their life when they got out of school was pretty much wanting to hang out with women. And so the idea of continuing to cultivate the male relationships kind of fell by the wayside. And so they had a lot of friends in high school, in college, but they kind of let that drop away. And in the process, they were, I mean, I'm not saying chasing skirt, but they were chasing women. What do you think about that that thought process as far as men in general, cultivation of relationships and, and why they did what they did? You know, I'd have to agree with you a lot on almost what you said, almost everything you said. Um, I do keep in touch with quite a few of my friends from high school, and I still in, in touch with most of my friends from college. Um, but once again, they're married in marriage settings, kids, families, so it makes it a lot difficult for them to get out and to socialize. Um, but I would agree too with the chasing skirts. Um, you know, a lot of times I would try to order. Try, make women a priority over my friends and that definitely has hurt me over the years and when you get older you almost look back and you can see how that's kind of affected some of the friends and some of the things that have uh, affected some of the relationships you've had throughout your life see and, and that's what I, I i think it's tough too you're right you, you kind of nailed it is the fact that many many men have tried to continue to cultivate those relationships with their men buddies in school, but you're right. People are at different places in their life. And when they're having, they have two kids and they, you know, they have the wife and they have all this stuff going. It's really hard to make room for the, for the, for the college buddy or the high school buddy. Um, and it's hard to kind of make that shift. Um, and I, and I, and I feel like that that's kind of the issue too, but I feel, let me ask you, do you think that Facebook has made any changes on connecting people? Do you think it's easier to connect with the folks from, you know, high school and college because of Facebook? And have you seen that connection ability turn into actually going out, hanging out at a bar, watching a game, or does it seem to be more like just 
messaging back and forth, but no real hanging out time. You know, I would probably say not a whole, not a, 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 well, once again, you know, I've moved quite a bit. So where I went to high school, it's a different state than where I live now. Um, so it makes it tough to keep in distance with all your friends. Um, Facebook makes it easier, you know, to see what's going on in everyone's lives, their kids, you know, uh, keeping up with the Joneses, seeing what everyone's doing. But I don't really think it makes us socialize more than on our phone when we're, you know, liking their pictures or giving them an instant message. I don't think it makes us ever come more together um, in, as, in the society. Um, now, I, I think it maybe does a little more with women. I know I travel a lot for work. So when I'm in other states, you know, I'll always message people on Facebook, but it always seems it's women that I'm meeting up with a lot easier that are my older friends that are than currently than trying to meet up with my friends from back in the days, if that makes sense. I think certain people are more uh, open-minded. I think certain people are more, you know, readily available. Um, I, I think it's funny. I was I was talking to some buddies the other day, and uh, we'll go on a little bit of a tangent here. Um, I think it's interesting when you go out of town for work, and you're out of town, and you're supposed to meet with people, but they, they, the ones that you think you're supposed to meet with are all going to blow you off. So you go do work, and then you're supposed to go to dinner, and you're supposed to meet with some old friends, and it just all blows up in your face. And I think that's interesting, too. Have you ever had that experience where you've made plans with somebody, and at the last minute, and I'm not talking about because they have the flu or the coronavirus, but at the last minute they cancel – um, that can be overwhelming, and, I, and I've had that experience where it's like the last thing I expect is that this person that's been like blowing up my phone, buddy, buddy of mine from old school, blowing up my phone, and then literally, you know, an hour before we're supposed to meet, some sort of cockeyed reason why not, and you just never can't, you never saw it coming out of left field. Have you ever experienced that before? You know, not off the top of my head. Like if I'm meeting an old friend from a long time ago, and you know, we have plans for. Yeah. Not that I can really think of, um, you know, happens, I mean, I, not, not not off the top of my head. I mean, if we actually have plans, we've, you know, we've actually made that connection. We've talked on the phone and we're actually going to, I'm flying into your city um, and, you know, I'm about an hour from where I'm supposed to be and then they cancel last minute. No, I, re I really haven't had that. Now, on the, women, yes, but not guy friends that I'm trying to reconnect with. Okay, so you have had a, you've you've experienced that with women, just not guys. Yeah, but more on like a date setting, you know, like hey, I haven't seen you in like six years. I'm gonna be in your town. You want to get a drink? Um, you know, and then they might message me the day of, you know, hey, something came up. I won't be able to make it. But not really on the guy setting where you know I'm like, hey, you know, it's been you know 15 years. Let's catch up. Um, but I'll be honest, I don't reach out to many of my guy friend settings 15 years ago and actually tried to do that now that I think about it. And why do you feel that you don't reach out that often? I've probably done it in the past and it doesn't really, you know, they haven't really shown much of an interest or busy or it just doesn't seem like they want to try to reconnect. Um, and to be honest, it's always more fun to reconnect with women than guys. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I think it's interesting, you know, I, I, now that you said that, you, you experienced that more with women, like breaking plans the last minute. I, I found that maybe a lot of it has to do with, you know, alternative motives. You know, maybe maybe now that I'm starting to think about that, you know, psychologically speaking, you know, maybe they had a motive in mind or something in mind, and then that changed. But we'll, we'll talk more about that when we return. We're talking more about the concept of making friends, the difficult time of making friends. But also later on, we're going to talk about ways that you can make new friends. Just a few things that you can do beginning, well, somewhat today, beginning today, things that you can actually do to make new friends and maybe even to uh, reconnect with some of the old friends. So stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. I'll be back this time in two shakes. Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, we've been talking about, well, making friends, the difficult time that men have 
more specifically making friends. They've actually, you know, dubbed it as the friendship crisis. And many men today wish that they had good friends or best friends, but they just don't have them. And it seems that there's more of an uptick with it when you're dealing with heterosexual men um, that they have a difficult time making friends. And it's hard for them to go up to a guy and be like, hey, bro, what's going on? You know, just want to, you know, hang out. Uh, It can be really hard, especially in society today. And being able to find folks that you can hang out with and, you know, just kind of be able to hang out, go to a game, go to a movie, whatever. But it was interesting. Scott brought up a comment here on the break. And I think this is a, this is a very interesting take. It is it, it does seem to be easier when you are in a relationship with someone. So if you're dating someone or married to someone to meet other people because of that person. Because there's more of a larger pool of people. Um, you know, Scott, you know, thoughts on that concept? You know, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, when I'm in relationships, you know, you're meeting uh, her friends. Their friends are bringing their boyfriends along. You're doing things together. Um, you know, then the girls are going to want to do things on their own. So then you'll have, you know, you'll be going out with their friends. Um, I think it's a great point. It's not like... You know, girls The girls will go to the gym together. They'll do classes together. Guys don't go to the gym and work out together. It's just not something, you know, you don't really think about. You don't really want to do it. It's, I guess maybe we're just more in tone. Sometimes the older you get, uh, being by ourselves in some situations. But I totally agree. And relationships, it makes it a lot easier to build friends um, because more people are coming into your circle than you being by yourself without them. I also think that men have more of a difficult time getting out of their own way. You know, I feel like a lot of times emotionally, I think that men are very tough and stoic on the outside. But I think that men are mostly vulnerable on the inside. I think that's why it's really tough because, you know, you don't want to look like the the odd man out. You don't want to look stupid. And a lot of women feel the same. But what I found is that we kind of have to overcome that feeling um, in order to even put ourselves in a position to make friends. And so I've seen that the more, you know, obviously the more closed off or the more non-responsive I am, the very little interaction I'm going to have. And I find that though men in general, I think that there's a lot of questioning as to where am I going to fit in? Who am I going to fit in with? Do I really want to spend time with this person? And then in, in various situations, I think that to some degree, a lot of people are also like to generally, like you said, spend time on their own. Um, Some people are more introverted. Some people are more extroverted. What do you feel like you are? Are you more introverted, Scott, or more extroverted? I would would actually be a little bit of a both, but it's, it's funny. You brought up a point and I was just thinking about it. Like when I'm traveling for work and I'm off going around by myself, I have no problem meeting people at bars, you know, restaurants, just walking down the street. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm in a different area and I'm outside of my element. Um, But when I'm in, you know, my hood, you know, my little street, you know, and stuff, I don't do and act the same way I would if I'm outside in a different state traveling for work. That's interesting. So you're more able to be more kind of uh, just in the moment and kind of putting yourself out there when you're not at home. Exactly. Like when I'm thinking about it now, like I have no problem going to restaurants by myself, eating by myself, doing things by myself, and then just meeting people. And that's really the way I meet new friends now. Now that I think about it is when I'm traveling and I'm talking guys. That's interesting. Yeah, so you're putting yourself out there in a situation to meet people. Why do you feel like when you're back at home, you feel weird about going out to a restaurant and eating on your own? You know, I don't know. I think the bar and restaurant scene, one, maybe because I owned the, was in the bar business, co-owner of a bar for like six years. Um, so you kind of know everybody in the industry and a lot of things don't change. And kind of where I live, you know, there's so many bars and restaurants. Um, I don't know. I just, a lot of my friends, they do it and they always say, Hey, why don't you just go They're like us? And you know, I, I don't know why I just don't go get drinks by myself or, you know, walk over to HG or, you know, walk over to Lakewood and get something to eat. It's just, I just don't do it. I'll, you know, usually cook or do the go. Interesting. I think a lot of us get into that way of life 
And I think it's about putting perimeters on our own life. And I think it's interesting, too, and I've seen, you're right, it's like what I've realized, too, is that when you're on your own, you have to have a, 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 a like, kind of je ne sais quoi about you. you got to have this feeling about you. you got to have this this energy. And when I've eaten on my own, you know, I always sit at the bar of a restaurant and hang out, and you instantaneously meet everybody around you, even if you want to or not. Um, but you know, it's, it's about feeling good about doing that. And I think socially, um, we have an issue with it. I I think honestly, socially, and I I don't even think it's just this culture. I think it's, I think it's multiple cultures. It's like, it's like, we're not supposed to feel good about the fact that we're on our own having a bite. And I see people, they bring like their books and they're this and they're that. It's like, they have like a whole at a shake case of crap that they can look at. So they don't look like they're alone. And and I find that really weird because I feel like, again, you know, society has these little issues. We have these little things about our life that we want to that we want to change. We have these social norms that we want to change. And all these little things can be easily fixed if we just talk about it, if we just talk about it. And I feel that a lot of people don't eat out because they feel weird about eating out on their own. And so it's it's like a catch-22. Instead of going out to the bar down the street to grab a bite or going out to the restaurant down the street to grab a bite and sitting at the bar, I'd rather just go on and call it in and, and eat at home. And then we're having that self-fulfilling prophecy where, hey, I'm alone. I'm not making any new friends. I'm stuck here. I feel isolated. And I feel that there's millions of people in this situation right now. You know, I think a lot of it is uh, we don't want to you know, run into people we know and be like, well, who are you with? You know, you hear by yourself and be like, oh yeah, I'm by myself. If we're traveling, you can use that as, you know, look, I'm, I'm here for work, you know, so I do everything by myself. Um, I remember a couple last year, the year before I went to a very nice resort down in, uh, right, uh, down by the Keys, uh, in Florida and I'm checking in and they're like, you know, it's a, it, it, they're like, you're by yourself. And I'm like, yeah, I'm by myself. They're like, you know, we've never seen anyone here by themselves. I went to the restaurant for dinner. I'm like, table for one, please. They're like, I felt like a guy in forgetting Sarah Marshall. You know, oh, you want something to read? You know, you're going to be bored all by yourself. They actually said, you know, we can, you can do room service if you just want to eat in your room. What? Um, I think a lot of it, they did. They were like, you know, you can just have a brought up to your room. I was like, guys, if I wanted room service, I would actually order room service. But like every time I went to a different restaurant or somewhere at the resort, they would all make the comment that, you know, you first person you're by yourself. Now it's funny. I went back to that resort a couple of weeks ago. And I actually went with a date slash good friend of mine, girl. Uh, you know, we've been friends for like 20 years. And I did see a lot of people at the resort by themselves. And I was making a point to her when I was there two years ago by myself, there was no one by themselves there. See, that's interesting in the way that they also react and respond. They're like creating this reality. <clears throat> They're actually adding to the problematic situation of the reality. Why would you want to sit in your room by yourself at a resort? <clears throat> I mean, it, it kind of it, it made me kind of laugh, and it didn't happen once. It happened a couple times. And, uh, you know, I even remember to this date checking in at the front of the resort. You know, it was a big, big, huge resort down in, uh, down in St. Pete's, you know, like it's huge, like seven pools, nine restaurants. There's lots of families, too. But I remember checking in at the front desk. They're like, how many wristbands do you need? I'm like, just one. And then she actually told her friend, have you ever seen anyone here by themselves? And they were both like, no, I've never seen anyone by myself. Jeez. I mean, what way to give me a complex coming into the resort, you know? I mean, it, it, it is interesting. See, that's one of the things that we need to dispel is it, it's, it's a society of things that we don't talk about. You know, not, you know, the difficulty of making friends we don't talk about. Instead, we just sit in silence with no friends. And, you know, it's interesting how nobody wants to look a certain way, but everybody's actually suffering. And that's the thing that kind of bugs me about the societal, social situation that we live in today that's being created and crafted by the limitations of other people. So stay tuned. We return. Scott and I are going to be talking about ways that you can make new friends. And, some, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the struggles. 
and hopefully we can add some solution into your day-to-day life. So instead of struggling, you can actually be thriving. Stay tuned because Live Your True Life Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. I'll be back this time. Two shakes. Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, Scott and I have been talking about friends, about having that friends, about finding friends, and the difficult time it is for most men in our society today to make quality friends. You know, what I found a lot of times, too, is that a lot of us have a lot of friends when we're young, and the friendships are not really that good. We make a lot of friends with a lot of people, but most of the friendships quite honestly suck. And they suck because they're dealing, we're dealing with narcissists, we're making a bunch of cluster B relationship friends, and it all comes down to them. But we sit there and we placate them because we want to be around a lot of people, but in reality, they're not quality friends, okay? And so one of the things that I want you to think about right now is if you do say, hey, I have a ton of friends, start looking at those friendships. Are they quality? Are you a quality friend, first off? First off, are you a quality friend? Does that mean that you care about people? You go out of your way to help people. You don't screw people over. You don't lie to them. You do what's right. Okay, if you're doing that, great. If you're not narcissistic and not so full of you, great. If that's the case, that's awesome. But now start looking at your friends. Because many people, when they have a lot of friends, and I'm not saying this across the board. I have some great friends. But many people, when they have a lot of friends, the friend quality is lackluster at best. And it's really about the numbers game. Okay, so we're not talking about the numbers game. We're not talking about the number of friends you have on your Facebook page. We're talking about the people that will come out there and bail you out of jail in the middle of the night. We're talking about the people that would help you to get out of being stranded. We're talking about those people that will come and change a tire for you. We're talking about the someone that's going to come by and feed your dog when your dog walker goes a wall. Whatever that looks like, we're talking about a true friend and that you would do that for them. And so Scott, you know, going back to some of those pitfalls, I thought it was really interesting, you know, when you were talking about doing your own thing at the resort, you know, going to a resort, being on your own, being a single guy at the resort. Isn't it interesting though how our society propagates these theories about people it's like why would i why is it a bad thing that i'm that i'm on my own like i've been to restaurants too when i'm on a trip and i'll go eat at a restaurant and i'll walk in and I'll, they'll say oh yes ma'am hi how many people in your party it's just me standing there and i'll be like uh just and, and i catch myself saying just me it's like why am i saying just me i mean it should be like me baby go find me a great table what the heck but I'll be like, oh, it's just me. And it's just, oh, just you. Okay. Hold on a second. And they make this big deal about putting the extra menus back into that trough of menus. And, and it's like, it's like, well, what are we doing here? I mean, haven't you felt that way where it's like, what is this production of making me feel like, uh, I feel like I'm, what is it, uh, Tom Hanks with the volleyball. Like, I got to hang out with Wilson. It's like, do I have to bring Wilson into the restaurant? I mean, who, holy hell, what the hell are we doing in society? You know, uh, and why do we have to sit at the bar? How come I can't sit at that table of one out there in the middle of the dining floor? I hate sitting at the bar, especially when you're traveling, because in the old, you know, half the time the people that are going to be talking to you at the bar, I don't even want to say, but let's just say they're traveling women. Uh, you know, it's a nice, you know, I do not like sitting at a bar when I'm out on the road uh, because. It's just a different atmosphere than barred and sitting at the table. But have you ever noticed if you are by yourself, they don't even give you a choice to sit at the table. They just almost, almost automatically put you at the bar. So like, it's kind of like, you know, if you go to a wedding and you don't have a date, you're stuck at the, the dateless table. <laughs> the dateless table. It's always an inter- always an interesting table. Uh, I've had some of my friends say, yeah, now they put me at the misfit table again. Thank you. Um, you're right. And, or it's the table back by the bathroom or it's the table like perpendicular to the kitchen where people keep hitting you as they get the water to refill it. You're like, I'm a human, too. I'm here, too. Right. And it's like it's it's like they do it on purpose 
because I think that it's based on the societal issues that people have. I think that people subconsciously can't stand being alone so much that when someone is alone, they're going to make them feel weird about it because it's their own it's their own issues coming out. What do you think about that? Well, being some part owner of a bar restaurant, I mean, one, they do have to think, you know, financially, you're going to make a lot more money off a table at four than you are a table at one. So that's why they're going to put us at the bar. And I do understand that, you know, it is business and they do have to, you know, they want to make as much money as possible. But you are exactly right. It's it's just the the way society looks at things, you know, it's like one is the loneliest number. Um, It it does help us. It It is helpful now, though. For the quarantine situation, I have no problem with this. Yeah, exactly. And and I understand that about the bar situation, but I do think it's people's insecurities coming out in the way that they deal with other people. And we're really seeing that because, you know, I've had conversations with even clients of mine that say I would never go on my own to a restaurant by myself. And I'm like, why? They're like, because I just I, I wouldn't want to do that. I was like, why? Why? I mean, you know, our most important relationship is with ourselves, and that's the one that most people screw up. It's the one that they never work on, right? And and I think it's interesting. It's like when people think about, like, I'm a therapist, right? And I'm also a life coach. But when people think about this kind of stuff, they are like, it's like the first thing that they, they ignore is their own self and learning who they are. And one thing that I've learned about myself is I'm totally, totally cool with eating by myself. I'm totally cool with going and checking things out by myself. I'm totally cool with seeing a movie on my own. I don't have a problem with it. And I actually don't mind it. And so it's like when people feel uncomfortable about being alone, that makes me realize that they haven't really done a lot of work on themselves to ever even get to know themselves. They get, they, they learn about someone on, on uh, Tinder that they don't even go out on a date with. They learn more about them in nine hours of texting than they learn about themselves in a lifetime. I mean, it's funny. I love going on trips by myself. I'm not talking work. I'm talking vacations. You can do anything you want. You don't have to agree to do everything. You don't have to kind of make a schedule. You just do whatever you want to do. Um, What I've noticed about, I don't mind eating out on my own, and I actually like doing it. What I don't like is running into people and then having to judge you for being by yourself because it, it happens quite often. You know, you're you run into someone, you're at a local restaurant. Uh, it's, I don't know. For me, it's maybe a little embarrassing. Um, and maybe that's why I don't do it as much in town as I do when I'm out of town. Okay. Um, you know, and I just think that sometimes I, I, I maybe it's the way society judges things. And maybe that's why I don't mind at all doing it when I'm out on my own away from uh, my city but when I'm in my city I don't I'm more hunkered down and won't really want to do things by myself and I really think it's the judgment I think it's a judgment and I've had clients also and I've had friends that say hey when I go out of town I'm the life of the party I can do it all on my own it's not a big deal I meet people I have a great time and I can make make some friends out of the out-of-town trips that I have forever but I feel like we need to take that reality and put it into day-to-day reality And I think that when overcoming some of those things, and I think one of the first ways that we have to do things is to overcoming, overcome feeling uh, basically not overwhelmed, but uncomfortable. I think that uncomfortability is something that we intrinsically have to feel in order to make any sort of timely change in our life. And if you feel uncomfortable about going out and eating on your own, then you need to start feeling uncomfortable. Because, you know, you know it's it, weird. that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, I had no problem going out on my own 15 years ago in the city. Maybe it's just the older I got, I, the less confidence or it's, it's something with myself. The older I became, the, the, the less I like to do it for some reason. And I, I don't know what the correlation is. I really wish I did. Maybe there's a comfortability. Maybe the fact is that you've gotten OK with it. And also it be, it, and also a lot of times we get a little lazy. You know, it's like, well, I could just order the food and sit at the house. I have a nice house. I got a hot tub on my freaking roof. I mean, what's so bad about that? You know, you start getting like kind of into your own groove. Um, But I think a lot of that is really comes back to, yeah, confidence. Do I feel confident to do that? Do I want to do that? Uh, And I think we lure lure ourselves into like um, a reality where we become, we we were very easy to create habits. And it's probably the habit of not going out. 
and you feel like you're on vacation from yourself when you're on uh, when you're on a trip or you're out of town, and so it's okay. You know, and I think lazy, you might have hit a big key right there, too. I do think lazy comes into it as well. I mean, this society's made such – we we became an at-home society, and I'm not even talking now. I'm talking before we all got quarantined in our house for three months. Um, and it, it, it does make it lazy when you just can sit at home and say, oh, do I have to actually go get dressed, you know, get ready – or should I just Uber Eats, you know? And I think lazy does play a big role into it. Yeah, and I and I think being lulled into doing something day after day, when you're out of town like that, you're not at your home. You know, you, your habits are not there. You're in a new space. You've got to create. You're like, you know, you're like forging out something. And I think that's the difference. But I also think we get lazy. We get stuck in our ways. But when we get stuck in our ways, we're over there like beating our head against the wall. I wish things were different, but yet oh, I don't mind being stuck in my ways. And so it's like getting out of that comfortability and becoming uncomfortable is the first thing. So the first thing that I recommend is really being outgoing. Be be uncomfortable with – be okay with being uncomfortable. Go be outgoing. You know, find that, in, in that inner connectivity where – all of us have been outgoing at one time or another. Figure out when the last time you were outgoing and when you really put yourself out there and put yourself in a somewhat obviously not unsafe but uncomfortable situation and really focus on what was around that and how to create that energy. It gets easier and easier as you do it. It just takes time to make that your new norm. What do you think about that, Scott? That's a good point, you know. Um, I think you do have to get motivated. You just have to go out and do it. Um, and just, it's a lot easier just to do it and to sit at home and make reasons not to do it. Uh, so I would, I definitely think that would be a good way to try to get out there and do things more. Um, definitely, definitely something worth trying. What are some things that you like to do? Because I think the other thing that's so important is, doing things you like to do and being able to meet other people who like to do them as well. You know, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, the older I've got, you know, it's not like I'm going to play basketball or soccer games anymore or volleyball. Um, you know, so definitely it's more became, I'm big in the concerts, sporting events, um, love trying new restaurants, Anything travel related, I mean, I love traveling. I don't think I'll be traveling for a while. I was supposed to be leaving for Aspen Saturday, but that's not happening. And my Jazz Fest trip just got canceled. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think my those are pretty much my likes. And it's kind of a lot of those things are almost solo done, um, easier to do solo than trying to find someone to do it. Exactly. Exactly. And I think going solo, too, you get to learn a lot about yourself. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. Sometimes it can be stressful. But I found that the more we spend time with ourselves and get to know ourselves and cultivate a friendship with ourselves, the better we are. I mean, that's what the reason why we're here. That's why we come in this world on our own and we leave on our own. That's why, you know, it's it, that's why twins are not born at the exact same time. It's about really getting to know yourself. And once we can become a friend to ourselves and really begin to see and acknowledge ourselves as an actual person instead of just somebody that's waiting for the phone to ring or somebody that's too scared to go eat by themselves because they're not good enough because they're on their own, we can begin to change this. I think another thing is, you know, just reaching out to folks. I think that a lot of times we, we meet people, but we just don't really follow up. Um, but, you know, it's also about being, you know, it's not about being picky, but it's also about choosing wisely. But I think, you know, when you do meet somebody, if, if you're, you know, you're at a sporting event or a meeting or, or something very interesting, you know, reaching out in a few days and, hey, how you doing? Let, let's let's set up a time to hang out and actually following up with that. Because I think a lot of times, just like people in business, you know, you get the business card, but you never follow up. I think it's kind of the same thing when we're meeting folks. A lot of times life gets in the way and we let other things take place and we don't ever follow up with that other person, leaving them kind of, well, I don't know. Um, you know, and that's probably where the lazy part comes in for me. Really? The following up. Yeah. The following up part and just, I don't, it's, a lot of things, you know, sometimes I just, I think, you know, yeah, some of it was just lazy on some of my parts. 
Well, I think that's for a lot of folks. And I, I think I think it's we got to get out of our comfort zone. We got to realize when we're getting lazy and we're just kind of lulling back into that old routine, right? Because if we want things to change, we can't keep doing the same thing and wanting different results. That's that's chaos. That's craziness. And, and lasting thoughts, Scott, what are some things that you want to leave with our audience today? You know, um, I think it's a big world out there. And I don't think, uh, you know, if you, there's something you want to do, it's just go do it. You don't need other people to enjoy life with. Um, other people make things great um, and better. But, you know, if you don't have, uh, you know, if, if there's something you want to do and you don't have a one of your boys, uh, fr- you know, a friend, a guy friend to go do it with, just do it by yourself. Live in the moment. Do your thing. I love that. Well, I, I really appreciate your insight and perspective on today's show, and I look forward to having you back on. Me too. I think hopefully, maybe, hopefully I won't be doing this from home, but maybe one day, you know, we'll be out of our houses sometime soon. So I might be able to do it at a nice restaurant or somewhere like that. That'll be good. I think many of us are looking forward to those days. So hopefully the happy days, the good days are here again soon. But in the meantime, even if you can't go out, different things, reconnecting with some old friends, reaching out on Facebook, reaching out to people, Skyping, texting, putting yourself out there, even if it's uncomfortable doing it. Now more than ever, people want to hear from you. They want to feel that you're around and they're really happy when you actually care enough to reach out. I know it can be a little tedious and maybe a little overwhelming, but heck, People will appreciate you for it. And the ones that don't, eh, let it go. Move on. Find someone else, okay? So don't let it get to you. But remember, let's work to get rid of the whole concept of not wanting to go out on our own because we're scared or we're not good enough. We are valuable. We are good enough. And we're allowed to go out on our own because that's what we want and we'll meet people in the process. We will not be alone forever, but the fact is is getting to know who you are, understanding who you are, and understanding your value. That's what's so powerful. Stay tuned. i got a great show for you next. Don't forget to check out the website. Go to AshleyBurgess.com, Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S.com. Also, check out the latest new website, The10DayChallenge.com, the word the, the number 10, challenge.com. Hope you have a great day. Please share this show with your family and your friends because it is tough, and this is a big deal, and it is better with friends. Stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. I'll be back this time. I know it. I'll be back this time in three shakes. Three shakes.